Hi guys, welcome to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Today we're going to be making a minestrone soup. This is a soup that is derived from Italy and I'll be giving you a little bit of a history lesson or some sort of a history lesson. Um, but to start off with the ingredients for the soup, we're going to be using some basil and some parsley. Now dry basil tends to be a little bit darker than the, um, than the oregano, sorry I meant to say oregano, uh, than the oregano. And then we're going to be using some black pepper, some salt, tomato paste, some sugar, some pasta, bay leaves, beans. I'm using red kidney beans but you could use whichever beans work for you. And then some tinned tomatoes. I just like using tinned tomatoes because they make my work a little, a little bit easier. I'll be using some onions as well, some carrots, some garlic, and of course celery. I'll explain more about the celery if you're not familiar with it. I'll be using some fresh parsley and some olive oil. So the minestrone soup is just basically a soup that is considered to be quite filling. So it's like a substantial soup, which um, used to have a lot of vegetables back then. So that's what we're going to be incorporating. And we'll go for a short break. And when we come back, I'll give you more on the history lesson. And we'll get started with the soup. So see you after the break. Hi guys, welcome to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you just tuned in, uh, today we're actually making a minestrone soup, which is just a soup that derives from Italy. And this was like way, way, way back. <laughs> That's what I like to think, like back in the Roman times, like during when like Rome was actually an empire, it was considered to be, Rome itself was going to be one of like the largest, largest towns like in the world. Now for the soup, we're actually going to be using some vegetables. Now for I mentioned earlier, if you missed out that uh, the, veg the minestrone itself is just like a really substantial hearty soup that most times was made with vegetables. And for the soups, we're going to be using um, celery. Now celery, if you're not familiar with it, basically just comes like this. When you go to the market, this is what it uh, looks like. So once you get it this way, all you have to do is just cut off one of the stems and voila. So usually for this um, leaves, you don't have to use them, you just discard them. Mine, some of them are a little bit withered, but don't worry about them because you're not going to use them. So you only need to discard them and you use the stem. As you can see, the stem is very nice, fresh and green, which is what we're going to be using. The leaves tend to be a little bit uh, too strong. So if you don't mind uh, the taste, I would suggest if you're going to use them, use them like very, very little. One of the things I like to use the leaves for is something like mashed potatoes. So I'll chop them, use like a very tiny amount because they're very like strong. So if you use too much of it, then it's going to overpower whatever dish you're making. So for the celery, all you have to do once you've cut it off, like I've shown you, just take off the little stems that I'm not going to use ones that have the leaves, which I'm not going to be using anyway. And then I'm just going to cut off the complete edge where the root is, because that part usually has a bit of dirt. Now you could completely wash that, but why hustle yourself? And then I usually go the extra mile, which you don't have to. You could skip this since I'm making the soup and it's going to um, soften up anyway. This is just remove some of the extra fiber, because when you have a nice, uh, beautiful celery stick, um, you tend to have a lot of fiber in it. So I just like to peel off some of the fiber just so that the celery is soft by itself. So just a little bit of the fiber. Just so that it's not too tough. So like I've said, this is completely optional. You don't have to do it. But I like to just do it because I feel like it gives my celery a bit of a kind of like um, a softer taste. And that softer texture, in, um, a softer texture is what I meant to say. And it doesn't have to be that fibrous. If you look closely, you'll see the fiber that I'm talking about. This is the fiber I'm talking about. So if you don't mind chewing through that, then it's fine. Like I've said, I am making soup, so it's going to soften up anyway. But I just like to go the extra mile. And usually I don't take out the whole fiber. If you've had a look, just a little bit. And you can see now the inside is a little bit uh, whiter. So for this, we're going to be using uh, onions as well as some celery. And so all you do after that is just cut it up into the size you're planning to cook it. So I'm just going to cut this into half because my celery is quite large. And then from this, I'm going to just chop this into nice small little bits. 
just because this side is a bit larger i'm going to chop this even further further down and further down and then give this a good chop so i'm just giving this um a rough chop so for the minestrone soup uh usually you could make little nice uh, small bites of the soup meaning the chunks are not too large and they're not too small either so you could go right in between or you could choose to go really really tiny kind of like a brunoise kind of cut in chef terms as we call it which is like a really really tiny cut but i'm just kind of just going with the in between cut here so nothing too small nothing too large either so once you've chopped your celery now i love using celery you could eat your celery also low or, um raw by itself and the reason I like it is just because it has got this nice um, peppery kind of like sweet taste, kind of like earthy taste as well, and a bit of like a spice, but not really. So I just really like the taste of celery. So I'm going to place this actually aside, then cut my onion before I add it to the heat. So for the onion, I'm just slicing this. And if you're just tuning in, today we're making minestrone soup, which is just a soup that derives from Italy. Now, I was saying earlier, um, this was it's believed to have derived uh, during the time the, um, the Roman Empire was still on board, or still trying to take over the other Latin countries. And so I just think that they made this soup because I guess maybe they were poor or something like that. That's like what I like to think. But of course, you could Google for yourself and find out <laughs> what the real origin is for the soup. But it is largely vegetarian, and so most times back then when people had a lot of vegetarian meals, it was mainly because of financial constraints. So if you aren't doing too well financially, most of the times people have vegetables because that was the easiest thing to afford, and meat was like a luxury. So you'll find like the noble people were the ones who most times would be having things like chicken, beef, pork, that sort of thing, whereby if you are a bit more like a peasant, because that's what you are called, so it's like the nobles and the peasants, then you definitely had like things that were more affordable and things that you could grow in your farm. So vegetables is what you'd most likely have. So we've just chopped our onion here. And then I'm going to add this now and add some olive oil. I'm using some olive oil. You could use uh, whichever oil you want, but just because like I've said, this is um, an Italian inspired dish. So that's why I'm, I'm, keeping, I'm using olive oil just to keep true to the roots. And my onion is quite strong. I'm feeling the tears. <laughs> so I'm just going to light my stove here, my cooker. And then we're going to add a bit of olive oil as well as some um, onions. Now I'm going to be adding some garlic as well because you know I do love garlic. So add a good amount of your olive oil, not too much. Just a good, in a, a good enough amount to saute. Then let me add my heat so that it's not too low. Okay. So just dump both of them together. This is the celery and the onions. Because I want them to soften up together. And for this soup, um, not much else. All you have to do is basically just the chopping. So there is a bit of chopping involved. So you could do the chopping in advance anyway. And store your vegetables in the fridge. So that you have less work to do. I'm going to go ahead and go to my carrot. Now I like using carrots um, in such dishes because again, carrots are inexpensive. And so for the Italians when they were making this, basically they'll just use uh, whatever vegetables were commonly available. So things like carrots, they had like cabbage, which was like a cheap cut but back then would be used. Of course now these days it's more of like a fresh thing whereby you'll use all the vegetables that you have in season, which will be easy for you to get in the market. So I'm just giving, again, my carrots a nice uh, chop here. Not very tiny, not very large. I'm going to add some more carrots just because I have them. Now, you could definitely omit the carrots if you wanted to. Something you could add that's not too traditional would be something like capsicums, which you'd which isn't traditional, but hey, you could add the capsicums if you really like capsicums. So just work with whatever vegetables you like. Other vegetables you could add that I'm not using is something like uh, a turnip. You could definitely add that. A turnip tends to be white in color and have this um, sort of like, kind of like a spongy taste. 
texture to it, sorry. And the taste is um, sort of like um, a potato is what I would consider it to be. And usually it's not strong at all. So you could definitely go out and explore with a tannic. It would also work really well in this dish. But I'm just going to use um, the simple vegetables, which is just celery, onions, carrots. Celery, you don't have to use it, but it's something that you can easily get uh, this day and age in the market. I know as Kenyans, we might not be very familiar with it. Maybe like celery, what on earth is that? But like I've explained, you can eat it raw, you can cook it. It's got this nice, sweet, earthy, peppery sort of like taste. And something else you could do, like the Americans like to have it with like a cheese dip. So that's something you could try, eating it raw and then dipping it in some sort of like cream cheese sort of like filling. But that's entirely optional. So for the other things we're going to be adding, we're going to be adding our beans as well. And the beans I mentioned earlier, all I'm using are just normal kidney beans. But before that, we're going to add our garlic. So just get a few, clove, uh, a few cloves of your garlic. Now, you know I love garlic, so I'm going to use a bit... Um, much <laughs> or what maybe you might consider much to me it's not much and i'm just going to give this a nice uh, bash so like i said this soup um does require a little bit of chopping of your ingredients but the good thing with it is that you can put whatever vegetables you want there's not really much of a row because it did originate uh, back then and during that time the roman time the roman empire they would basically just work with whatever vegetables they had so there's not so much of a role as to which vegetables are considered right, right? Okay, so we're just going to give this a nice chop. But most times it will definitely have tomatoes because tomatoes for them are easily kind of like available. So I am going to be using tomatoes. Now for the garlic, you know I love garlic. That's why I said I'm using a little bit more than you would. And personally, I like to sweat my vegetables, which is what my onions are doing in my carrots and my celery. And that's just because it gives it a nice uh, texture, aroma, the flavors come out more, they're more alive. So anytime I'm making kind of like a soup, I always like to saute my vegetables in advance. If you don't want to, then you can definitely um, skip the step and add all your vegetables together with water directly. That will actually cut back on any extra oil that you have to add. But if you do, you should definitely not skip the frying process because like I've said, that will just give your vegetables a nice taste, aroma, sense to bring out all the natural juices from them, caramelize them as well a little bit. So I like all those flavors going on in my soup. So I'm giving this a nice stir. My heat is not too high, but if you feel like it is, you can definitely reduce it. And then I mentioned we're going to be adding our spices and our beans so for the spices that i'm using today some salt some pepper some tomato paste so now i'm going to introduce my heat just because most of the things are now getting nice and soft so for the spices i'm using i'm going to be using some oregano and some basil i mentioned we're using dry basil dry oregano basil tends to have a little bit of a dark color if you look closely you'll notice that compared to Oregano, which tends to have a bit of a lighter shade. So this is, again, a little bit optional. But then because it is an Italian sort of dish and these spices are commonly used in Italy, the basil and oregano, so I'm going all out and I'm using them as well. You could use uh, mixed spices if you want, uh, mixed herbs if you want, sorry, which comes as a combination of like the dry basil, the oregano, sage, thyme leaves, marjoram, they all come like in one packet and sweetened mixed herbs, so you could definitely use that. Or you could ju just use like I am, the dry basil and the dry oregano. So a bit of black pepper, because you do know I love my black pepper. So a good amount, I want a little bit of a uh, peppery taste. Now you could add some chili as well, and I'm going to add some salt. So I'm not using any um, beef stock today or any cube or any chicken stock, no stock at all. So I'm going to be adding my salt. Remember I mentioned anytime you're using like a chicken stock or a beef stock, vegetable stock, or even the store-bought cubes, always make sure to add your salt kind of like at the end, just because once you add your spices and you add your cube as well, then it's going to have some salt in it. And if you season 
and add salt right at the beginning and then add all your spices and everything else, it's going to be very hard to balance it out if you go overboard with the salt at the beginning. So that's just a tip to consider. Anytime you're using stock, just add it in and then test your soup after before adding the salt salt. But if you're not, then go ahead and just add all your spices, mix those together. Now I'm adding my spices at this stage because I want them to also just toss up a little bit, get some of the nice flavors that are going on with the oil. So just to fry up a little bit. But I mentioned that you could definitely just skip that whole step all together and do it straight ahead. So for the tomatoes, I'm going to go ahead now and add my tomatoes. And then we'll be adding a little bit of water into our mixture here. So give this a good uh, stir. Now one of the things, um, the dish, like I was saying, the minestrone sort of soup, what, what they used to do back then, because like I said, it is considered to be kind of like a poor dish compared to the people who are more nobles and those who are peasants. So they would add things like pasta to it just to give it a little bit of more texture and filling because at the beginning if you did join me at the beginning I mentioned like I mean minestrone soup is a bit or has a bit of some substance and it's very filling so for that obviously you have the vegetables but you need a bit of like some starch so they'll add something like pasta or you could add rice as well so I'm adding pasta now one of the pastas you could add is like the spirali pasta which is what, what I'm using but also just a pasta that's not very long this like the spaghetti. If you're going to use spaghetti, I'll suggest like you chop it up into tiny bits just so that it's the same size as your vegetables when you pick it up and it's not too large. So you could use like uh, any pasta that's this size, so like a penne pasta that's not too long, uh, as well as the spaghetti that if you've chopped it up. The elbow pasta, which is like the pasta used like for macaroni, you could use that. So we're going to go ahead and add our pasta here and then give this a nice stir. But then not too much pasta because you don't want the whole mixture to be very heavy in pasta. You still want you to see your vegetables. So everything is going to cook together. Your pasta is going to become nice and soft. And then we're going to add a bay leaf. Now, I like using a bay leaf because bay leaf has got this nice undertone, kind of like earthy flavor that kind of just infuses the food and brings it all together. It's, kind of, it's one of those things that you could actually, you know, like if you're having tea, how you put like a tea bag, that's how the basil works because it just infuses its flavor into whatever liquid you're adding it to. So I like to add just one. One is enough, it's more than enough. <laughs> so for the salt, uh, for the sugar, I'll be tasting this after. My sugar is only here for me to taste the seasoning to see whether I need to balance out the acidity in my tomatoes because anytime you're cooking with tomatoes and you feel like your acidic is too high then you want to add a little bit of sugar just to balance it out you don't have to if you're very against the whole sugar artificial stuff you don't have to add it <laughs> you can just definitely stay away from it so we're going to be adding a little bit of water like i mentioned and for the water like i was saying earlier if you just tuned in I mentioned you don't have to use water, you could use whatever liquid you wanted. So like, for example, you could use a, a stock, a chicken stock, beef stock, vegetarian stock. So if you're making the food for someone who's purely vegetarian or vegan, then definitely do not use like a meat-based stock. Use water or use a vegetable stock. And if you're not familiar with what a stock is, basically it's just made uh, with vegetables. It's where you get a few vegetables, like what I used earlier, like the onions and the carrots and the celery. And then you add some water to that and then let that cook out for about 40 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. Basically the water takes the whole taste of the vegetables. And usually to that water you can add some salt, some pepper, a bay leaf like I've added, and then you have your stock. So that's basically the basis of making your stock. So this actually could be considered as one, but I have added tomatoes, so that's why it wouldn't be, because most times the stalks are like clear. They don't have any other taste to them because they're meant to absorb whatever taste you're going to add to them, whatever ingredients you're going to add to the stock. So I'm going to give this a taste, because like I've mentioned, I want to taste it just before I cover it and simmer it to make sure that my salt here is um, well balanced and the sugars and it's come to a boil. I always say anytime you're going to taste something and decide whatever you're going to boil, give uh, whatever you're going to add, give it some time to actually come together and come to a boiling point because that will mean the flavors have merged together. 
So give this a nice taste. Mm. I can actually taste the pepper. Like I was saying, I wanted my square bit peppery and I added the pepper. So I'm going to add just a little bit of more water because I don't want it to be too thick. Like I said, it is a soup and the starch from the pasta is going to make my soup thick. So always uh, put that in mind. So just a little bit of water. And with that, that means I'm probably going to have a, add a bit of salt just because I've added water. And then now I'm going to add my tomato paste and then we're going to cover this and just let it cook out. So you want to leave this to cook for about 20 minutes. So from anywhere between 20 minutes should be good because basically you want for this dish, this is one of those dishes that you actually don't want your pasta soft. You don't want it al dente, kind of don't want it soft because you want it to release all its uh, starchy flavor. So you want all that starchy content inside your liquid so that it can help thicken your liquid because I'm not going to add any flour to thicken it. So all that is going to be coming from the pasta. And the tomato paste here is just for color, a little bit of texture. Now the beans I'm using, my beans are already boiled. So usually you can add your beans and then just let them steam all together slowly. So that's why I'm adding them at the last minute because remember they're already boiled and they're already soft. So I don't want them to be complete, to completely die down inside the soup. So that's why I've given that a little bit of some time before now I add them. But I do want the bean flavor to infuse inside my soup, so I'm going to add them in. So go ahead and add your beans and then give that another star. So, and that's it. That's a very simple dish to make, which is why I was saying it was a very simple to make a, a dish to make back then because it was considered to have no work, just the vegetables you had for the people that were in that day and age, the Roman Empire age, because this is an Italian inspired dish. So from there, we're going to just let this from this point simmer for about, like I said, for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, basically until your pasta is done and it's nice and soft and, your, and all your flavors have all come together. I'm just going to give this another taste and see whether I need to add anything else. And as it is, I don't feel like I need to add anything else. I think it's just as perfect. The only thing I'll need to add is just my parsley, and which you could add in here, but parsley is more traditional here. So we're going to lower the heat. And for our soup, you could definitely have your soup with bread if you wanted to, to mop it up and get all those juices in there. But because I have the pasta, this is one of those, like I said, healthy dishes. So I'm not going to be adding any more carbs into it to really have the pasta going on. So we're going to go on a short break so that when you guys come back, my soup will be done and I'll be plating it for you. We're making minestrone soup. So make sure you come back so we can get cooking. See you after the break. guys, welcome back to Dinner Guide. I'm your host and chef, Shina Amario. If you're just tuning in, today we're making a minestrone soup, which is an Italian soup. And it was basically from back then during the Roman time, and it was mostly eaten by the peasants. Now, if you just came in um, during the break, we put, in, uh, we put our soup to continue steaming. Remember, I mentioned that I lowered the heat so it could actually simmer and not like boil at a rapid boil. And the vegetables are all in there. I said give it at least about 20 minutes so all the, the flavors can all develop together. So we're going to open it and voila. So if you're just tuning in, this soup actually has some pasta, some celery, some onions, some carrots. So all those vegetables are in here as well as some beans. And I added a bay leaf. This is actually called a bay leaf. In case you missed me, adding it in. And all it does is just add some nice flavors to your soup. 
So if you take a closer soup, my soup has gotten thick. Remember I mentioned the pasta is going to help thicken your soup. So with all the water I had added, it's actually kind of like reduced and the pasta has soaked up all that water because that's what pasta does. As it releases its natural starch, it soaks up the water. And so you can see the water is a little bit um, kind of like dark. So it's starchy, nice and starchy, that's from the pasta. And I gave this a taste already, but I'm going to give it another taste just to be sure that all the flavors are in there. I don't need to add anything else. And it's hot, so I'm just going to blow it. I don't want to get burnt. <laughs> Yum. Like I said, adding all the flavors together, like all the beans, brings everything together. It combines it and makes it a really, really nice, thick, rich soup. So we're just going to serve this. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and just add some parsley. And I can put off the heat now. It's had enough heat. So we're going to add some parsley. Now I mentioned you could use whichever herbs are easily available for you. But just because this is an Italian inspired dish, I'm going to be using parsley. I'm just going to break off some of the stems that I don't need. Instead of parsley, something else you could use that's also like um, Italian oriented is uh, like basil leaves. You could use some fresh basil leaves if you wanted or some fresh oregano. For the minestrone soup, I already used dry oregano and dry basil. So that's I'm finishing it off with some fresh parsley. So all those flavors come together. But you could definitely just use fresh basil and fresh oregano. If you don't have any of the above, then you could go with our traditional Kenyan herb, which is dania, cilantro which is more commonly available and more commonly known. So you could just go with whatever preference you like. So add some of the parsley. So the parsley just brings your dish all together. And I'm going to leave a little bit just to top it off when I serve it. So I don't want to add all my parsley here. I want to leave a little bit for garnishing. So I'm just going to start this. And anytime you're using fresh herbs as a rule of thumb or something that I like to do, most chefs do that as well, is anytime you're using like fresh herbs, add them in at the last minute. Whereas if you're using dry herbs, add them in at the beginning so that they can take on the flavor and soften and bring on their natural flavors because they have been dried. So you, most times you always want to add dry herbs at the beginning so they can infuse the food. And fresh herbs at the end so they can bring on their freshness. So I'm going to get a spoon and then just plate my soup. Now this is minestrone soup in case you're just joining us. It's a very nice thick soup. So we're just going to plate it in our bowl. So like, you, like I mentioned, the pasta here makes your soup very thick. If you notice, the liquid is nice and thick. So it's very hearty and warm and filling. Definitely very filling. So like a large serving bowl of this and you'll be so stuffed, like very stuffed. So this is a nice meal you could have when, uh, during like the cold weather, winter. For us, obviously, it would be like the rainy season here in Kenya. But out there, it would be like winter. So this is a really nice addition to... I'm trying to get rid of the uh, bay leaf. For the bay leaf, usually the bay leaf only adds a uh, flavor and does not get any softer. So it's only here to infuse your dish. And so usually you don't eat it. So it's just there to infuse your dish. So I'm just topping this off with the pasta so that everything can kind of like fit in my one bowl so that you can have a look at everything that's going on. Ooh, yum and delicious. Then I'm just going to wipe the sides. So this is our minestrone soup, which was very simple to make, just full of lots and lots and lots of vegetables, whatever vegetables you have in hand. Like I mentioned, there's not really so much of a role of the vegetables you can add to your minestrone soup. Whatever vegetables you have, just work with that. You could also actually go the extra mile if you don't want to have this vegetarian. Though I did say back then in the Roman Empire, they had this uh, vegetarian. But then if you don't want to, in this day and age, you could add some meat, add some chicken. If you wanted, add some sausages. Actually, if you wanted, add some beef. Fish as well would work in this, actually. So any meat you'd like to add, go ahead and just add it. Just make sure that now you'll have to have stewed the meat a little bit longer before adding the pasta. Because if you do add them together, especially like if you're making with beef, then the beef might not be as soft. 
and the pasta will get mushy. So if you're adding meat, maybe add it at the beginning, make sure it's soft before adding now your cooked beans and of course the pasta. So that has been dinner guide for you. I hope you enjoyed uh, the meal today. It was Minestrone soup. I had a great time cooking with you. I had a great time giving you a small history lesson of the origin of the soup as well. I hope to I hope for you guys to join us and we can interact some more on Brand Plus TV. I have been your host and chef, Shina Amario. And until then, I'll see you on the next episode. Bye.